This is a 25 minute full body strength workout for people with diabetes using resistance bands. And I've provided links to the bands that I use down in the description. You'll need a strap, tie, or towel for stretching at the end. Before getting started, please make sure that your blood sugar is between 100 to 250 milligrams per deciliters and you've watched the relevant safety and instructional videos posted in the description below. Let's start warming up with sumo squats. Take a wide stance that should be up to about double shoulder width. Hands in front of the chest and toes pointing out. With your chest squeezed to the ceiling and abs braced, begin to squat down reaching your hips to the back wall. Go as low as you can safely go keeping your knees tracking over your toes and then stand back up. 45 seconds. Keep a steady breathing rate throughout the warm up. Let's lie on our backs for dead bugs. Bring your legs up to 90 degrees and put your hands next to each knee. Extend your left leg and right arm in opposite directions. Return to start. Now extend your right leg and left arm back to start. Continue for 45 seconds. Roll over to your hands and knees for cat cow, placing your hands directly underneath your shoulders and knees below hips. Pull your spine to the ceiling while pulling your head and pelvis toward each other. Hold for a few seconds. Now reverse the position so that your head and tail are now pulling towards the ceiling while your belly button drops to the floor. Hold for a few seconds and repeat each for 45 seconds. Stand up for side lunges. Start with a stance that's about twice as wide as shoulder width stance, with your trunk upright and hands on the hips or in front of the chest. Begin to bend your right knee towards your right ankle, keeping the knee tracking over the foot. Go as low as you can comfortably go, pause for a second, and then push off with your right foot and return to the starting position. Repeat on the other leg. Side lunges are going to put more of an emphasis on the hip adductors and the inner thigh with more activation in this muscle group when compared to a sumo squat. Worms, you're going to reach your hands to the floor, walk your hands out as far as you can, making sure that your hips don't cave to the floor. Pause for a few seconds, then walk your hands back to the start and stand back up.
time to jump into the workout. We're doing seven different movements that so will each be repeated once and we'll go for 30 seconds on and 30 seconds of rest for each movement. The first exercise is the banded sumo deadlift. Loop each end of the band around each foot and take a wide stance like we did in the warm up with the sumo squat. Bend over with a flat back, bend your knees and grab the middle of the band. Chest up and abs braced, begin to straighten your knees. Once the band is above the knees, start to open the hips and stand up all the way. On the way back down, bend at the hips until the band is just below the knees. Then start to bend the knees until your hands are at about mid shin level. Continue this movement for 30 seconds. Inhale on the way down, exhale on the way up. Let's rest for 30 seconds. If you want your own diabetes resistance water ball or t-shirt to help you stay motivated, check out my merchandise link in the description below. Let's move into the banded press next. You can do it standing or seated. If standing, stand on the band with a hip width stance and grab the band on either side of the shoulders, just above the shoulders. Press upward so that the band finishes just behind your ears and the arms are fully extended. If seated, you can loop it under your chair or bench so that it's under your hips. Inhale on the way down and exhale on the way up. The press is going to help strengthen your shoulders and the triceps in the back of your arms. The next exercise, the banded lunge, is a great exercise for improving balance and there's an instructional video in the description below. Stand on the middle of the band with your left foot and grab each end of the band with each hand in a place that you start to feel tension when your hands are at about mid shin level. Take a long step back with your right foot about the length of your leg. Allow your hips to sink to the ground while both of your knees bend. Make sure that the right knee drops as low as you're comfortable with but ideally as close to the ground as possible without touching and then stand back up. During this movement, try to keep the upper body as vertical as possible while bracing the abs. Make sure that the knee stays in alignment with the foot. Inhale as you move down and exhale as you stand back up. Our next exercise is the banded floor press. Lay the band on the ground and then lie on your back so that your upper back is on top of the band and keep your feet on the floor. With each end of the band in each hand and your elbows at 90 degrees with your triceps against the floor, make sure that your arms aren't perpendicular to your body but angled in towards the trunk at about 45 degrees. Press up until your arms are completely straight and back down. Inhale as you lower the weights and exhale as you press up. We're now going to do a banded lunge on the other side, placing the band under our right foot this time and stepping back with the left. Banded reverse flies are up next and you'll need a lighter band for these. From a standing position with heels under hips, 
Secure the middle of the band under one of your feet and hold each end of the band in each hand. Put a slight bend in your knees with a proud chest and abs braced. Begin to bend at the hips until your torso is angled at about 45 degrees while maintaining a flat back position. With arms hanging down and palms facing each other, begin to bring your arms out to the side up to shoulder level while maintaining that slight elbow bend. Inhale as you lower the band and exhale as you lift them out to the side again. Our last exercise in the sequence is shoulder taps, down to the mat. Place your hands underneath your shoulders and get into a plank position with a wider foot position, about shoulder distance. You can also do this from your knees. While keeping your hips stable, tap your right hand to the left shoulder and then place that hand back under the right shoulder. Now tap the right shoulder with your left hand and then return that hand to under the left shoulder. Continue these movements for the rest of the 30 second bout. Let's repeat each of these exercises one more time with banded sumo deadlifts up first. Please remember to hit like and subscribe.
Nice work. Time to cool down with some stretching. Sitting on the floor, pull the sole of your left foot into your right inner thigh. Point your right foot forward, squeeze your chest up, and begin to bring your chest towards your right leg while maintaining a flat back. If you have tight hamstrings like I do, you may not be able to go that low, but this stretch is gonna help improve your range of motion, which is helpful in preventing lower back pain. Make sure that you're stretching until you feel some tension, but no pain, 45 seconds. Switch legs, hold for 45 seconds. Grab your towel for the next stretch. Seat it on the ground, hold one end of the towel in your right hand at shoulder level so that the towel is against your back. And grab the other end of the towel in your left hand at hip level. Gradually try to move your hands along the towel as close to each other as possible until you feel a bit of tension without pain. Switch sides. Toss the towel to the side. With wide leg placement, open your legs as much as possible without pain. Chest squeezed up, walk your hands forward while maintaining a flat back. Thanks for training with me.